Good morning. Welcome to the today's session of Computer Organization and Architecture. We are discussing uh, the second module. In the previous discussions, so we have discussed addressing modes and then we discussed assembly language. In all those discussions, we have assumed that the operands required for the processing of the instructions, whatever we have written, okay, is already present in the memory. But actually, we are not going to get the operands directly okay, in the memory. So now let us learn how the operands are transferred into the memory. So if you consider the operations, okay, so of that is transferring the input from the input device into the memory and uh, transferring the outputs from the memory to the output device is categorized as basic input output operations. So today we will be learning about the basic input output operations. So we are going to discuss the input output operations in detail in the next module. For time being, okay, let us okay just learn. So what are the basic input output operations we have and the instructions related to it. Since we are discussing about the programming and we, since we are discussing about the instructions here we will be learning what are all the instructions we have okay that actually facilitates the IO transfers okay so next topic is basic input output operations Yes. So now uh, let us understand how the input and output are transferred between memory and the input output devices. Okay. Yes. So if you consider the basic input output operation here, the very important thing what we need to understand is so there are several techniques okay which perform these input output operations and those techniques are. Program controlled I.O. and interrupt driven I.O. and lastly we have direct memory access. So all these techniques are used okay, in computers in order to perform the input output operations. We will consider all this in detail in the next module. Now okay, let us discuss this in brief. So if we consider the first one program control IO. So in this the processor is going to wait until the input is ready in the input device and it is going to wait until the output device is ready to accept the character or accept the output okay so in this case you will be having a program okay which will be executed and in that program you will be having certain instructions so one part of the instruction will accept the input and the another part of the instruction will produce or it will give the output to the output device okay and in the second interrupt driven IO there the processor is going to issue a command to perform the input output operation and it is going to continue with the execution of the next instruction. So in that case once the input output operations are over the input output devices okay which are connected to the processor will give an interrupt will rise and interrupt the processor will halt the execution and it is going to accept the input output okay whatever it is from the devices then so in this case so that is how the operation happens okay and the last one is direct memory access so in that case so there is no involvement of the processor only the input device and the memory will be involved in the data transfer between input output devices and okay memory so there will be a direct transfer of data from input output devices to memory from memory to input output devices okay so this is about the program control io interrupt driven io and direct memory access that is 
the IO techniques. So next we will discuss okay we will see so what are all the registers what are all the status flags that are involved okay in the operation. So if you consider the first one okay program control IO let us consider okay the simplest one that is program control IO and let us understand how exactly the basic input output operations okay happens in a computer. Yes. Before considering program control I.O., if you consider the speed of operation of the processor input and output devices, so we know that the speed of input device is restricted by the user. So the sp speed with which he types, okay, that is the speed with which we can give input to the computer. And then if you consider the output device and uh, output device depends on the bus. So how many characters it can receive at a time okay and how many characters it can print so it depends on the bus which is connected to the output device and if you consider the processes as we know processor executes millions of instructions okay per second so we know that we have already discussed when we discussed the performance of the processor that so all these input output devices okay processor are going to affect overall performance of the system therefore it is essential to synchronize all these devices since there is a difference in speed it is very essential there is a need for synchronization of all these devices and one such solution okay solution to synchronize all these devices is to make the processor wait so processor issues a signal okay so to read so when it is issued a signal it will check for whether the input device has a valid character in a buffer register which is associated with the input device and once there is a valid character in order to check the, if there is any valid character or not so there will be a another flag okay which we will see later so it will check for the flag if the flag is high that indicates the processor that so there is a valid character so when the valid character is present it is going to read that character it is going to store that character in a memory and then okay if you consider the output device so similar to the input device there also will be having a buffer register there also will be having a status okay a uh, bit so status flag so using which we have to determine whether the output device is able to accept the character or not so if you if your output device is okay ready to accept the character then you will be having that status flag as one so if that flag is one then the processor will copy the contents of the memory into the buffer register which is present in the output device therefore so like this the processor has to wait until the status flags which are present in input on output are okay equal to one so once the reading operation and okay so the displaying or giving output operation is over so then the automatically the status flag will be cleared to zero so this is one solution to the task of transferring the input output to the memory okay so that is actually nothing but program controlled IO so in program controlled IO this is how the operation happens the processor will wait until a valid character is present in the data again and the processor will wait until the output de device is ready to accept the character okay this is how the function happens in program controlled IO yes so now we will consider the interconnection bus interconnection of the processor input device and output device and with an example we will understand so how the input and output devices are communicated using through the processor using the bus okay so let me consider single bus structure so this is bus here we have processor we have input device and input device you will be having a data in okay register and as I said you will be having yes in status bit okay using which the processor will decide whether there is a valid character or not okay yes so next we have output and here also you will be having a register buffer register that is data out and you will be having status register so that is 
okay yes out so let me consider the input device as keyboard and output device as display yes so with this let us discuss so how okay the processor will communicate between the input output and okay how it is going to store or retrieve the data from the memory and as i said before processor will be executing millions of instructions whereas so keyboard through, through keyboard we will be able to give tens of characters per second and output as i said so it the speed depends on the bus interconnect okay connected so the number of lines whatever we have on the bus depending on that okay the speed of this display device will be depending yes so now if you observe we have data in data out as buffer register s in and s out as status flags okay yes so all these will be present in a circuitry called as device interface which will be connected to the processor through the bus so all these are present in device interface circuitry so interfacing circuitry will be there for all the peripherals which will be connected to the processor so through the bus it will be connected to the processor yes now so if you consider the input and output devices so let us assume the, we have a task of accepting a character and displaying that character on the monitor or the display unit okay yes if that is the task initially what happens whenever a key is struck on the keyboard okay so a scene will be made as high it indicates the processor that so a scene is one indicates the processor that there is a valid character in the data in so as soon as we press a character so that will be converted into ascii code and that will be stored in data in register okay and the processor will be continuously monitoring sin value so once this sin value is high it is going to read the char character which is present in data in and it is going to store that in some registers which are present in the processor yes so now once the reading operation is completed this sin will be made as zero so that will be cleared to zero and when the sin will be again made as high when we are going to press another key on the keyboard so if you want to okay display the next character if you want to type the next character once you type okay then s will s in will be made as one so that indicates the processor that there is another character which is ready to be stored in the memory okay so this is about the input okay circuitry and the respective registers okay and status flag bits so next on the output end so it is similar similar to the input end here we have one register okay buffer register to store the data and one status flag so in this case the processor is going to monitor s out continuously if s out is 1 that indicates that the display device is ready to accept the character so if s out is 1 this processor is going to copy the register contents into data out okay and then so the display device will be printing whatever there is okay in the data out so in this while this operation b is being performed this s out will be clear to zero okay and again it will be made as high when this display device is ready to accept the character therefore so remember in program controlled io you will be having a program okay you will be having a program so in which a set of instructions will be performing or will be accepting the character from the input device and there is another set of characters sorry instructions which will be giving output to the output device therefore so if you use program controlled io so the processor needs to wait so wait until the input device input is okay available in the input device and wait until the output is ready to display okay yes or accept the character yes so this is about the program control io and simple okay program that is accepting a character and printing a character now let us okay uh, see the instructions which are related to 
these so if you consider the instructions which are involved okay in io operations so i said already it needs to wait therefore so you will be having set of instructions which actually involves a waiting okay a loop will be executed so that it waits for some times until the character okay or the input or output is ready to okay give the input and ready to display the output okay yes so the two important instructions which are associated with these input output operations are read wait okay and the second one is right wait yes so in this case read wait what happens branch if s in is equal to 0 then transfer data in to some register r1 so in this case branch if s out is equal to 0 transfer contents of r1 to data out so just now we have discussed so but here we have the instructions so, so we have read wait instruction so what it is going to do so branch if sn is equal to 0 so it has to branch to what branch to read wait okay branch to read wait if sn is equal to 0 so if sn is 1 then this instruction will be executed that is transferring the contents of the input buffer register into some memory location so i have chosen it as register r1 so similarly if we consider branch to write weight write weight if s out is equal to 0 if s out is 0 then it indicates that it is not ready the display device is not ready to display the characters therefore so it is going to wait until the s out becomes equal to 1 so once it becomes equal to 1 then it is going to transfer the contents okay of the register into the data out so these are two are the instructions okay we have for performing the input output operations and uh, one more important point we need to discuss is till now whatever we have discussed in all our discussions we have assumed that the instructions or whatever okay the data or operands whatever we have written all these are okay stored in the memory but if you consider the memory or the address space so in some computers okay there will be a dedicated space for io operations in that case so you will be having uh, separate instructions in order to execute or in order to perform the io operations so that type of memory mapping is called as isolated io so in isolated io you will be having two address spaces so one is for the normal instructions okay so what we write and there is a dedicated space for io operations okay so that is about the isolated io but till now whatever we have assumed so we have assumed all are okay going to store in a single space in that case okay we call it as a memory mapped io okay memory mapped io so what it says these okay data in data out s in s out do not require any okay other isolated address space these will be treated as the normal registers normal operands itself therefore evo and in such case it is not required to have special instructions to access this so the, till now whatever the instructions we have used to transfer the data like move load store only those okay can be used in order to move the data from this data in registers and data out register into the memory okay so no special instructions are required in case of memory mapped io so now we will consider memory mapped io and we will continue with our discussion okay yes 
now let us consider the memory map io organization and let us see so what are all the okay instructions we have related to memory map io so if you see here i have written move byte data in comma r1 move byte r1 comma data out so these are the instructions okay which we use uh, in order to transfer the data between the memory and the data in and data out registers yes if you see if you observe we have move byte so the difference between the normal move instruction and this is we are indicating or we are explicitly mentioning that we are moving a byte of data so why we are doing so is remember when we type or when we give some input through the keyboard all the key are converted into 8 bit characters so all the alpha numerical keys whatever we have are represented using 8 bit okay character therefore we are okay explicitly mentioning we are moving a byte of data into the register so we are writing the input okay so accepting the input statement as move byte data in comma r1 so the input will be copied into r1 next for the output we have move byte r1 comma data out so output that is from r1 whatever we have given as input that will be copied into the data out register so now similar to this data in and data out as i said these can be assumed as the okay registers so which have memory allocated okay in the memory itself so there is no dedicated space that we have assumed so in memory map divo similar to this you can assume the status bits s in and s out are also okay in the memory itself you can assign address to s in and s out but usually the practice is to okay use these s in and s out in status register we will not be okay using it as a single bit instead we will be assigning it to any one of the bits in the status registers and in this case we have assumed in status as status register for the input device and out status as status register for the output device so with this assumption we have made one more assumption that so the s in bit and s out bit are present in third okay position of in status and out status respectively so we are assuming the s in and s out okay are present in third bit position s in and s out are in third bit position of respective status register okay this is our assumption so with this assumption so we have this set of instructions okay in order to perform the accepting a character and reproducing it or displaying it on the display device if you consider the first okay set of instructions that is these three statements we have read wait test bit hash 3 comma in status so that is the first statement we have so test bit it is going to test for the third bit in which register in in status register so if that bit is zero if that bit is zero then what it indicates we have already seen if sn is zero there is no character so you still the processor has to wait yes so if branch is zero if this result is zero okay then it is going to continue waiting so it is going to execute this okay wait loop so if this is not valid that is if n is in is one instead of zero if s in is one then it is going to move the contents of data in into the register r1 and next we have the right weight loop if you observe in right weight we have the three instructions again okay so in the three instructions first instruction is test bit hash 3 comma out status so it is going to check for the third bit of the out status and if that result is zero if that result is zero then okay it is going to wait for some more time so if that result is zero what it indicates s out is zero if s out is zero that indicates that the display device is not ready to accept the character therefore the processor has to wait for okay few more time so that the pro the s out value becomes one so if s out value is one 
that is if this is not valid then it is going to execute this instruction so wherein we have move byte r1 comma data out so data out will be okay given with the or copied with the contents of r1 so this is how okay the instructions are executed by assuming that we have okay in status and data in data out in the memory itself yes so now let us write a program for accepting n characters or instead of saying n characters a string of character a line of characters okay so and display that in the display unit so let me consider that as an okay example program and let us see what are all the instructions that will be involved and then we will analyze the program yes if you consider the example of accepting a line of character and displaying it on the device so since i am saying line of character so there should be a register with which holds how many characters are present in that line so that is very important so we know how to okay accept single character and how to print this or how to display the single character but now when i say line of characters okay string of characters then there should be some means of detecting the end of character and not to detect that okay we will have a some mechanism and initially we will be storing or we will be starting the be stored in some location so that is given by move ash l o c comma r not so here we are assuming that so this okay l o c is the location where we are supposed to store the character yes so first character okay then successive characters will be stored so in successive memory locations yes so after this we have to write read okay so read test bit hash 3 in status yes then what happens if branch is zero then it has to execute that read or read wait whatever the okay name you want you can give that name to the loop therefore here instead of read wait i am writing it as read then we have to move so see here so i have not written just r1 or just r not instead i have written it as contents of okay this so data in should be transferred to the address which is present in the r not not to the r not okay because we have assumed that it should start at some location so if you assume this is 1000 then you will be having r not value as 1000 therefore so you should store the first character in the memory location 1000 therefore so data in should be copied into contents of r not yes so next let us write if you want you can use the same or i am using a different label name here so echo loop name is written as echo because since it has to display it should be echoed on the display screen so i have written it as echo same test 3 sorry yes third bit of out status then branch zero echo move byte contents of r not should be moved into data out yes so after this as i said before so there should be a mechanism of finding whether there is the end of character okay or not yes not to do that we have compare cr care is written is used in order to okay indicate it is the end of character so if the this is the end of character then it has to stop otherwise it has to branch to which loop read isn't it yes so branch if not equal to 0 if the care is written is not 0 okay continue 
reading the character and displaying the characters so now i have written compare compare hash cr so it is going to check for the cr value so carriage return value which will be stored okay in the memory so if it is not zero it is going to continue if it is zero it is going to end the program and in this so we need to keep okay increment the value of r not why so once the character okay is stored in the required location thousand next it has to be copied into the next location therefore so if that is the operation to be performed then you need to increment this r not so which is performed by auto increment that is r not contents of r not plus so in that case r not value will be incremented and compare so this will be performed along with that so we are going to increment r not then depending on the cr value okay this comparison result so whether it has to execute the statements or not will be decided so if that indicates it is the end of the string end of the line then it is going to terminate the program it is going to end the program okay so this is an example of accepting a line of character and displaying on the output device yes so this is about the basic input output operations as i said we will be dealing with this input output operations in detail in the next module thank you